Okay, so this week I will be drafting Fate Reforge in anticipation of the Pro Tour. Um, and this is brought to you from the lovely Atlanta Airport Hotels, courtesy of the wonderful Northeast Storms that have trapped me here on my way back from my top four finish in San Jose. Uh, I'm going to have some lovely turnaround time landing tonight, leaving tomorrow for D.C. Uh, hopefully I can spend today stuck in this room drafting and actually catch up on some lost time there. Um, Favorite Forge is like a really interesting pack to start with. I'm still figuring out the signals. Like I had all the signals and cons down really well in terms of like what meant what archives were open. But like I think the power level of Favorite Forge is a lot lower. Packs dry up a bit quicker. Uh, so... Uh, when packs drop a little quicker, it's hard to see, like, playable trends, because sometimes there just aren't playables there. Like, uh, the pack I opened for the GP had, like, a single white playable. Well, uh, as usual, you take the rare. Uh, that one is especially absurd. I'm passing a Valorous Stance, a Dragon Bell Monk, and a Sky Captain, so I should check with those table. Um... That's like a good indicator on how many white cards I can expect. Stance is obviously the next best card. Um, if I don't table... Um, if I don't table the stance, I'm probably expecting to table Gorswine. Um, but like, if you look at this pack, like Shadow Spear's not very good. Crotic's not very good. Uh, Disdain, Runemark aren't very good. So by the time I get this pack back, there might be like three playables left. If there's a white card... Uh, it's just worth noting how many white cards there are. If all of them are gone, it might be a sign that white's going to be a bit of an issue for me, and I should lean on my secondary color. Um, and the gorse wine makes me um, like I think the gorse wine is very likely to table here, so that makes me incentivized to take other cards that go down that road. Uh, over bathe in dragon fires. So. Um, I think that it's the Beastmaster versus the Bathe here. I think that Reach is good, but I don't think that... I, I really hate taking a lot of early high drops in this format. Um, I think that's really easy to get cluttered uh, on that slot, even though Reach is a very unique and powerful effect. I think that Bathe is not significantly worse, and costing three at this point is better. Um, I think that the Beastmaster is a better card than Bathe. However, uh, I think the Bathe is close enough to the Beastmaster... Uh, that lining myself up in white-red instead of white-green uh, is better. I think if it was like a, sab a Sabertooth, I would take that. But I think the Beastmaster is like just a little bit worse. Um, it's really good, but just a little bit worse. I guess the Lotus Pass the other considerable, but I think removal is a higher pick than that card. Wow, okay. Um, well, this card is actually unbeatable. Uh, I'm going to... So there's an uncommon and a common missing. And there's a sand step outcast. So I'm going to assume the way is open. Um, but I, I have to take this card. I have no idea what common someone would take over that. Um, it was probably a... Like a bathe or a... Uh, that'd be stupid. That doesn't even make sense. It might be a foil rare and an uncommon. That makes more sense. I'm going to take the mob ghoul. Uh, I think I like Dragon Bell Monk more than Gorswine. Uh, there's a lot of... So the playables here do point a little bit towards black being open. Um, but I'm not super excited about any of them. Like, Angler's fine, but it doesn't look like I'm going to pan out to be green. Um... The, it, it's just kind of like one of those things where like green is just so bad pack one that it's really hard to tell if it's open sometimes. Like the cards just never look good to begin with. Um, Alicia's Vanguard's not very exciting either. There's a rare and two commons missing. I'm just gonna take the monk. Okay. So the Lotus Pathogen is the best card. Tranquil Cove though might be better. Um, there's not a lot of white, so it might be time to move out and just, I think moving into this card this late, they're like, again, like these other cards, like it's literally, those are the two cards in the pack that I think are reasonable. Like 
mediocre playables, obviously, but I think I want the Gen. I think it's like a little bit better than the Cove here. Yeah, it it's. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna take the two drop. Um, I don't think anything else is close. The fact that there's another harsh sustenance here, uh, maybe I should move in on that. But I think just having the two drops really important. So, and then this is like one of the better ones, anyways. Especially if I end up like I'm looking to have double uh, prowess guys, anyways. Uh, the warfler is also good, but I think that effect is uh, less replaceable than the two drop. Like, and this is a prowess triggering two drop too. I have three prowess guys, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, that card should not be in the pack. So, I'm move some stuff around. I'm looking to be white red or like blue white red potentially. I, so the, the thing on the cove is like if my picks were like val like if I didn't have the like imagine my first rare was a blank and I took the valorous stance, um, I may have taken the cove over the gin under the logic that I actually have a card that's really good to splash. Uh, but mentor like mentor splashable, but it's like less exciting to splash I think than stance because like if you don't draw your fixing oh, two drop uh, two drop is definitely better than uh, pressure point. Uh, like if you don't draw your fixing until super late, uh, the uh, the Mentor is not as exciting as it should be. Oh my gosh, I have a Wild Slash to go with the Mentor? Jeez. Um, and from, like, the reason I'm moving the Jin to the board is that I don't really want to, com like, I don't really have a reason to be more than the colors I am. Okay, so the Gorswine table, there are a bunch of white drafters at the table uh, based on the fact that three white cards disappeared from that pack. Uh, however, the power level of my current white cards is high enough that I'm okay fighting. Uh, that guy's actually pretty reasonable to drop, I think. Like, he's like a good early two drop that if the board stalls and like he becomes a brick, you can just cash him in, get two cards out of it, and then like give him back. Like you cash in for more cards, you just always end up ahead on the exchange. I think he has a lot of text. I, I think that people undervalue him because of the fact that he's a lot of text. Ooh, this is actually close. Uh, I think this card's good, but I think the soul summons is more important. Uh, just having the two drop. I think break through the line. Uh, it may have been the sealed format as opposed to the draft format, though. Um, but I, I guess I was like an obs on defensive deck, so it might be more conditional. Um, I should play around winds of Calcima, noticing that cards going around. Uh, I'll take the on-color card and force people along the line. I think that also might be like a build-around card. And I don't remember if there was one or two. Sweet cyborg card. Um, and if there were two of this card, I'd rather uh, take it and push someone out of that archetype because they are in my colors. Uh, Battle Rage is not the most exciting combat trick, so I'm going to keep it in the sideboard. I only have one thing that it works with uh, for Trample right now. I mean, it's not to say that there aren't a number of them in the next pack, like uh, Canyon Lurkers or... Uh, there's not really a white three power prowess guy, but... Uh, the Feet and the Horde Chief are also close. <sighs> I think the rare is... It's between him and the feet, I think. I think the Horde Chief is not as good. Not as important, maybe. I think this card is powerful enough that I just take it at this point. Especially because I have no 5 drops. Uh, I don't really... Mardu Ascendancy is good. But I, I don't really think it's... I think I want the Kirin, actually. I love that guy than the Ascendancy, I think. I, I think the Aerostorm is also less powerful than the creature at this point. Uh, 
I didn't see any Mardu Lands pack one, so I don't want to get stuck out of that either. Uh, student, I'm not super excited about it. I think I'd rather have the four drop uh, than the student. Student's like just okay as a beatdown guy, whereas uh, this Prowler is actually kind of important in terms of triggering Ferocious on some cards. Not this card, but other cards. Could like Battle Rage someone. Uh, kind of want the Smite. I'm not a huge fan of the Morph or Valley Dasher. I think the Smite is where it's at. Uh, Scoured Barons is also pickable. Um, I don't have a lot of big creature removal though, so I think the Smite is actually like a unique effect that's pretty powerful in my deck. Maybe I was supposed to take the Barons, but I guess based... I saw the Reach. I didn't actually see that much black going late the last pack. So the only reason I take the Scoured Barons is if I think that I'm going to pick up like a late Butcher of the Horde or something. Which, I think by passing the Mardu Charm, my odds have been significantly reduced. Uh, yes, please. So the guy to my left is probably like white-green, like Obzon or something. Uh, I'll take Leaping Master over the Black Land again. Leaping Master is like the best two-drop I could have, I think. Uh, so I think the best cards I could pick up are, like, I don't think I want Barrage. I could use, like, a Trumpet Blast or a Rush, but, um, just, like, having one. It's not insane in my, like, it, this is definitely better than Rush in my deck. I don't have a lot of Warriors. Like, I have a Monk. Monk. This guy's a Monk, right? I don't have the right click because I didn't bring my, uh. Oh, get in there. I didn't bring my mouse with me. I'm pretty sure the Trumpet Blast is what I want here over the Bird Warrior. Bird Warrior is like kind of replaceable in this archetype. It's not bad, but it's not insane. Uh, I actually... Yeah, I don't want any of these cards. I'm going to take the land and make my opponent's decks worse. Slash, splash something. Um, I kind of want to take the Pony back here. Over the, the War Name Aspirant. I think that the payoff on the pony back is pretty high, and this card's not actually that exciting. Obviously, I've been like passing all these Mardu lands onto the logic of, eh, don't need it. I'll take this card. This card's actually pretty good against White Ride sometimes out of the board. Uh, hey, draft this guy. He blocks all my flyers. Hey, draft this card. Let someone think they are okay playing Bell Strike. There's a fixture if I get a rare to go with the pony. Pony's on the lock. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 creatures. And 6 spells. So I probably need to pick up another 3 or 4 creatures this pack. Or probably, no, it's like 4 creatures this pack. 3 if I play the Pony. And another like 2 spells or something. Like I can make the spells work pretty easily. Like I could play a banner if I really want to. If I need to fix for a Pony. This card's just really good, so might be worth it. I do have a Trump of Blast to go with that, so if I do see a black red land, I should probably pick it up this pack. I took a Leaping Master over one this pack. That's fine. I took... Uh, I take over the other one. There's a Smite. I think the Smite is also fine. I didn't have the Ride down. I think I take the Horde Chief. I think that's better than the fixing. I think that's better than the Battle Priest, too. Like, Battle Priest is good in certain decks, but I think in my deck, uh, I'm going to be nothing but disappointed by the card. Um, it's just, like, clunky and awkward. I'm going to get punished for that pick. Uh, probably just another Kirin. The other option is like Heat Obzon Guide, which I don't like. Yeah, I could add another Black Land. Where's my Kirin? 
Uh, I do like a Hordling Outburst here. I think that's better than Aerostorm. Definitely better than Rush of Battle. Gosh, I'm forget. There was a trick I passed. It was the Winds of Kalsumo. That's the card I need to play around. I wish I had remembered more of what I had passed left. I'll try and remember this pack. Um, but if what I passed left pack one, if and like figure out where that ended up. Uh, I think that ride down gets better in multiples. Wait, no, it, it doesn't. But it's just really good to begin with. So who cares? Uh, there's three things that trigger Ferocious in my deck. War Shrieker would be nice. Um, maybe I want the War Shrieker. It's pretty insane in my deck. Eh, I'll take the War Shrieker, I think. Kind of weird to say that. I guess like double ride down's a liability in the aggro mirrors. Oh, yes, please. There's multiple lobs on gods on my left and multiple battle priests. Only the perfect land. We'll get the pony back in the deck now that we have two ways to make black mana. Uh, between that and the war shrieker. It's a pretty reasonable... Uh, I had the outburst. Let's use another spell. Uh, I think I want the cyborg smite the monstrous over the valley dasher. Jeez, this pack. I think it's horde ambusher, but I think that uh, I think that as is, this card doesn't add enough. The bloodfell caves doesn't add enough to my deck. Uh, whereas Horde Ambusher, like, Bloodfell Caves has a little bit of Ponyback Brigade, and it's just the Brigade, which I'm fine as playing as a generic morph. Um, whereas the Ambusher is, like, a very unique dimension. And wow, that card tabled. Okay, my deck got good. Uh, Gorswine is not at its best in my deck. I will take a Dasher in case I need it. I don't think I'm going to main deck it. I think I have too many two drops as is. Uh, I think I want Barrage and Board. Like, Harp Pierce is good against me, but, like, Barrage does the same effect of killing my one toughness, guys. Um, and, like, I do have three things to trigger it, so... I mean, it's not good, but it's a plan if I need to. Out. Uh, I've tended to like banners a little bit more in this format, but I just don't have enough payoff for it. I don't really know why I like banners more in this format than the previous one. It's not like the land density really changed. It's kind of interesting. It may be that the... Um... So I think I know the reason why. It's because there are less morphs, so your three drop slot is less cluttered. I have to cut a couple cards. I have a feeling one of them is Gore Swine. I'm not a huge fan of this card in this deck, as is. It's like the only one. I'm going to cut these two, actually. I already know what they are. Uh, it's those two guys. I think the Flyers and the War Shriekers are more important to what this deck is trying to do. Um, I did not pick up enough for just synergies. And out of the pack, what are you still doing there? I don't know what he's doing there either. That guy's the best. He is actually the beatdown king. I feel like every time I have that card in my deck, it attacks at least one. That's a lie. I had it in my deck for a single game at the GP, and it did not attack. Um, I lost very easily. But I'm pretty sure that uh, the fact that that 05 does not have Defender has come up for me like in about 80% of the times I've played the card. Um, not like actually in play, but like in a deck. Just like triggered Wingmate Rock the Pro Tour uh, at the GP, I attacked with it and like untapped it with my opponent's uh, Jeskai Ascendancy that I had stolen with Villainous Wealth and killed him with it. 
Uh, and then, like, I t attacked and teamer charmed it for, like, the one lethal point of damage. And, like, that card has killed too many of my opponents. Way too many. We have 17 creatures, 6 spells. Uh, the remaining debatables. This card is not good in my deck. This card is not good. I don't have enough to make them good. I think Obsom Advantage also has an argument in my deck. Just like, might want another combat trick. But I have enough X1s. Like, the trick with the plus one on this is that I think if you are, like, all X2s, this card gets a lot better because it turns your X2 into an X3 in combat. But I have, like, Double Horde Chief, uh, Defector, uh, Leaping Master, Wandering Champion, Hordling Outburst, Ponyback. Like, I think there's enough of a chance that it's just going to go on a 1-1, one, one, which doesn't really... Like, the 1-1 one, one might trade for a 2-2, two, two, but I don't want to use, like, a 1-1 one, one and the Obzon Advantage to do that. So I think this is fine. Though, uh, what's my spell count for these crazy prowess guys? I do kind of want another spell, actually. Uh, I have nine spells. I kind of want a tenth. I guess I only have two prowess guys. Three. This guy's probably just okay as is. Nope. Cutting any of these. Dragon Bell Monk is a potential cuttable. Uh, I don't want to cut any of those. So it would be like Dragon Bell Monk out and Obzon Advantage in. Which seems kind of backwards because I'm then cutting a Prowess guy for a spell to trigger Prowess. That doesn't sound right. So I passed a Valorous Stance. One second here. Notes on what I passed. I passed two Obzon Guide, one bat or two Battle Priest, uh, a Ride Down, Valorous Stance, Winds of Kalsima. Past a rush of battle and a war flare. I think I passed two harsh sustenance. Don't remember seeing a lot of green pump spells. I didn't pass anything like it would come immense. I mean, this doesn't mean it's not there, it's just. Uh. I think so let's lay out incentive cards so like this is a reason to have red early reason to have red early like a double red card but that's late so that doesn't count too much i've got a bunch of reasons to have white early so i think it's just dead even i don't really care if the pony flips or doesn't but again i have three sources for it uh because the war shrieker raids so here we go with this white red beats. It's actually good. I was uh I was kind of struggling like I found myself not ending up white nearly as much in the practice drafts and that I was doing. Um, I don't know if it was because I was undervaluing white cards or people were over or if I was like undervaluing white cards, people are overvaluing white cards, or I was overvaluing um like non-white signals like Lotus Path Jin. Um, and just push my way out of it, like, you know, I'd, like, kind of ignore soul summons and packs or whatever. So, I, it's good experience to, like, I think this is a white deck that worked out. And it might have just been because I got a bunch of good cards, but we'll see.